Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this tutorial I want to show y'all how I made these electroformed cabochon rings. So let's get started. So I have a piece about halfway made <clears throat> right now so you can see at least in form what it is that we're making and we're going to start off with this hammered ring band. Now, you could bypass this step entirely by just purchasing flat wire or if you don't want a flattened ring band, but I'm using a 12 gauge bare copper. I know in a lot of my tutorials, if you guys follow along with me, I usually use enameled pair of wire, but I've also grown quite fond of their bare uh, copper wire as well from parawire.com. Um, I decided I wanted a size 9. So I've actually used a bit of scrap wire to measure off. Um, and this is just the length of like the inner diameter of the ring. So I'm actually going to add a little bit of overlap to the ends. So I'll need about two centimeters longer than this piece. And to measure that, I'm using my stainless steel ring mandrel. But um, there will be links to all the different tools and materials that I'm using down in the video description below. And so measure it out, uh, extend by about two centimeters, and then I'm going to snip. Now this wire, um, just being as thick as it is, uh, is very, very like hard to bend right now. So we're going to anneal it. And again, like I said, you can totally skip this step um, if you have like a softer flat wire. But um, even if you have a flat wire, if it's like, you know, a 16 gauge or 18 gauge flat wire, it might be like still kind of hard to bend. So what we're going to do is I have a fire brick here. Um, you could also use like perhaps a soldering board, but I like this brick because it reflects the heat back to our wire. So I feel like it heats up a little faster. And honestly, a bigger torch would, would do me better here. Um, oh, and there's the cat being rambunctious. Um, but I just have a micro torch for now. So we're going to just torch it. I'm doing this in real time so that you guys can get a good idea of what's going on. Can't quite see the flame, but let's see if maybe... You can see the little flame a little better now. So, now, and I do have some pliers on hand here that are not my usual pliers and I'm going to be using that instead of my hand to move this around. So you can see that's starting to heat up a little bit. And I want to heat the whole wire to red. So we're just going to start by, it's going to oxidize some really beautiful colors. It's going to burn all the dog fur off the brick. I try to keep stuff clean, I really do. Zoom in a bit, maybe. We're starting to get a very slight glow there on the tip. And so I get the glow going and then I travel up because the heat is dissipating to the cooler part of the wire, at least the way I understand it. If you have a kiln, you can also just anneal your wire in the kiln. It actually takes a little longer, I think, but I don't have a kiln, so I could just be speaking out my book. And by having the torch pointing, not towards me, but I mean, it's, it's in no way is the heat coming towards my body, <clears throat> but uh, by having it travel up the rest of the wire, it's keeping it, I feel like I'm not wasting, you know, fuel. Okay, so we've got a nice glow going now. And I don't know why, but my torch in particular just does not like to shoot to turn off. Come on. Like, there we go. So yeah, I really need to uh, get a different torch, I think. So it's, it looks, it's not glowing anymore. That does not mean that it is cool. So, even after jabbering and messing with my torch, take a listen. 
that's how hot that is. Do not touch that with your hand. <laughs> and that's more a note to me than to y'all because it's, you know, a lot of folks are like, oh, well, common sense. That's not one of my strong suits, you guys, <laughs> unfortunately. But a quick little dip like that. Now, keep in mind, your brick is still going to be hot. Function under the presumption that everything is hot at all times. Like your torch tip is still going to be hot. So I set that off to the side, scooch the brick over. And now we can see this is actually much easier to bend. So I'm going to take our stainless steel ring mandrel, find our size nine, and just bend this. Well, you know, I'm supposed to hammer it first. Well, if you wanted to keep it round, and we might just, let's keep this one round. And then we'll do it again for another one. <laughs> but I'm bending it around and overlapping. Just a little bit like that. Now, if we were to hammer it, I would be using a steel block. And I'll still hammer it to show you, but we'd have to anneal it again is the thing. So there we have, and if you're making it for yourself, you can go ahead and try it on. Because I want this top part here, I want that to be flat. So I'm actually just going to come in with my pliers. Sorry, trying real hard to stay in frame. That cat's just having the time of her life playing. Yvette, if you're watching this, Callie is loving the toys that you sent her. <laughs> but it just slides on right like that. And this one I think is going to be great for just a nice little... Cabochon. And this is a cab that oops, is so small that, I mean, I've had it for years because I don't really wire wrap things that small. Um, it's just, it's hard. <laughs> wire wrapping little things is hard. And so I've just kind of been hoarding it. And so now I think it'll be perfect for doing this ring. So I'm going to go ahead and do that same thing again, uh, but kind of speed it up and then meet you guys back here for hammering. So now just because I like sharing that noise with you, we're going to quench it. Woo! <laughs> I love that. Now I tried to get this one uh, to glow for a little bit longer because I felt like the other one wasn't as soft as I wanted it. So now, yeah, nice and cool, but our brick is still hot. I'm going to set a couple of finished projects off to the side. Well, not finished projects, but I think you get me. Then swing the camera around, angle it a bit, because now we are going to be hammering. There are a couple of different kinds of hammers that you can use for different effects. I personally really like this one for this uh, application because it's nice and heavy, so it gets the job done with minimal effort. But you can use a chasing hammer or a ball peen hammer, um, and you'll get some really cool effects. And then also with this hammer, they have different heads that you can put on so that you can get different textures like and uh, patterning and stuff. I'm not gonna be using those today, but they are something to keep in mind. Right now, I am using the rounded flat head. And I'm just gonna be coming through. And this is gonna be really loud, so I may mute it. Uh, if I don't though, just keep an eye out um, and I'm just gonna start backing the heck out of it I'm gonna start in the middle and work my way out no particular reason I'm just experimenting to see if I like that better than starting at the end so now you can see that texturing and flattening that we've started to get I'm gonna do the other side oh well crap I was hitting with the wrong head so this is a good example, though, to demonstrate the difference between uh, steel head, nylon head. The nylon head will still work hard in it, but it doesn't nearly do the flattening that you want. So let's try this again. There we are. And 
you can also keep in mind to do just one side and get like a cool hammering effect or you can leave the other side nice and flat. I personally really like the rough organic looks of a lot of these. So now I'm going to go ahead and anneal this again. Again, I'm going to throw it into time lapse for you guys. Um, and then I'll meet you all back here for the next step. So we've gone ahead and annealed it. Now there is an option that before doing any kind of torch work that you could flux the piece and that um, helps with the fire scale, like it helps reduce it. But I found that my flux will, will like, if I don't take the piece off quick in, fast enough, um, it'll just stick to my uh, fire brick. And honestly, the fire scale for the most part comes off during pickling and polishing, and I am still electroforming over this. Um, and really, I like the kind of discoloration and stuff that you get with some of the uh, fire scale. It is, I think it adds such a nice organic character to it. Um, but, uh, you know, that's unique to each piece. But so we're going to go ahead and come through now and hold it to the size 9. And I am just shaping around and you can see how nice and soft this is now. We got a little bit of spreading and you can see actually how much the difference in size by spreading this open like that. So we can either size the ring up a little bit if that's in our hearts to do that or we can trim some off and I always save all my little trimmed pieces but I think this one in particular we could do a really neat like wide ring. But I think I'm going to use this one to set my ammonite. And I'm going to experiment a little bit with using my round nose pliers to come in. Oh, easier said than done. <laughs> and flat wire doesn't really like to bend this way. But instead of trimming it off, we can just shape it around to suit the shape of our stone. That way it gives us a little bit more copper to connect in with um, in with the epoxy sculpt that we're going to be using. Let's slide that back onto our ring mandrel. And then I can use the hammer to flatten it out. So then I'm actually going to use my pliers. It, so it gives yourself some room to fiddle with it, and that's perfectly okay. It's okay to be a little, a little fiddly. <laughs> so yeah, just bending a bit, hammer a bit, bend a bit, hammer a bit. You can re-anneal it if you need to. Or if, you know, you feel that's getting kind of hard to work with, just go ahead and heat it up again, quench it. You know, there's no sense in making more work for yourself than what you need, but so that's how that's looking now. Size. Now this is a stainless steel ring mandrel as opposed to an aluminum one, and an aluminum wouldn't hold up to any kind of like heating or hammering too much. Trying that on again. Feeling pretty good. And I think this will bind nicely for our next step. So I'll meet you guys back here when I get my workstation cleared off. I've actually been messing with it and I've decided I want to use it for this ring base for this cabochon instead. It just fits a little more naturally with the shape of the stone. But I'm going to trim down my ends here that are just a little long. And I apologize if y'all can hear power tools in the background, I think. The neighbors are doing something. But yep, just snipping that right off, and you can feel free to file that down. Um, but it, for me, it's going to be embedded in the clay, so I am not worried about it. But just trimming off that little bit of overhang. And so now we will proceed to the next step. <laughs> just to show you. I'm using a product called called epoxy sculpt though for this project you could also use polymer clay because my stones are safe to be baked 
Um, what's nice about the epoxy sculpt is, well, some pros and cons. The nice thing about it is it doesn't need to be baked. The downside is it takes like 24 hours to cure. So I try to plan ahead a little bit and you know, kind of get a couple of different projects going, but it's very, very strong. Um, you can't solder to it like after it's been electroplated because the epoxy will start to like burn away from the inside. That's the voice of experience. Um, and it's, you know, don't eat it or anything, but it's relatively, you know, as non-toxic as toxic things can be. Um, the warning just says may cause allergic skin reaction and eye irritation. So don't, don't put it in your eyes. Um, but yeah, I do recommend gloving up, but there's no like smell. Where did, which one did I pull this from? That one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no like distinct aroma to it or anything, but it does laugh in the face of water whenever you try to wash it off of your skin. So once like you kind of have to wait for it to dry if it gets really stuck under your fingernails, but, um, I just find it's a little easier to, uh, sorry, the cat found a piece of scrap wire and she's cramming it down the heater vent. Um, it's easier to just glove up. Sorry, super distractible as usual. I actually need to take a sharpie and just mark on the tips on the top on the lids which com compound it goes to. So we have same size nuggets and I'm just going to do a fold and roll. I fold it and roll it into a snake. This is my favorite way of blending. I just, I feel like it's quick and it's the same muscle memory that I use for polymer clay, though my gloves are a little baggy on me. Another uh, side, side result of like a side effect rather of losing weight that I did not anticipate is now I wear small nitrile gloves instead of medium. The medium are too baggy now. So. I'm just getting this and this has a really long working time like it's super sticky very very sticky for the first like 30 minutes and then you can still work with it for another couple of hours um you know and then even after it's hardened it sands really well so it, in every phase of using this you can refine what you're doing so i'm just going to pull off a little bit that's actually still probably way more than what i need um, and I usually try to have a, at least a couple of projects going every time I mix them up. So I'm just putting a generous pea-sized amount here on the back of our cab. And then pressing that into our ring shank. Like pressing that all the way. So you can see. Maybe. Can I zoom in even with gloves on? Yes, I can. <laughs> Sorry, still getting used to uh, a new phone that I use for my camera. And so now I'm just kind of pushing and smushing and getting everything sorted around. We have a little bit of copper metal sticking out right there, so I'm just going to twist it that way. No copper ends are poking out. Smushing here on the back because that's where I want to make sure it has such a nice actual curve for where your finger is going to be going through. And you can use whatever modeling tools or rubber tools that you might have on hand. A craft knife comes in pretty handy. <laughs> this cat though, you guys, <laughs> she's just chasing a little toy mouse around on the floor. So if you're wondering what that noise is in the background, that's the kitty having fun. And the day that I stop a kitty having fun so that I can have a more professional quality video is the day that I should quit being a YouTuber because it has changed me. <laughs> So I'm just kind of shaping, I really want just a subtle, um, I, I want this to, I don't want you to be able to tell that I have a bunch of 
basically clay holding my stone to the ring band because once this dries I'll be coming back and showing you guys how I use copper tape to make it look even a little bit more refined and this epoxy sculpt dries really quite strong okay now I am for the sake of these little nubbly parts that are poking through I mean, I could go in and trim the wire but no, I think I'm going to use those she found a jingly ball <laughs> I'm just watching her jump around. <laughs> oh, I don't deserve cats. They're amazing. <laughs> okay, so you can see we've gotten that little... I really hope I was in frame that whole time. I was watching a cat over my shoulder and sitting... <laughs> um, to cover up these nubbly bits, what I'm going to do is zoom out a little bit. That way I stay in frame. And I'm actually going to make some little balls out of polymer clay. Let's pull our, pull our glove up on our finger. <laughs> that way it fits a little better. <laughs> and just make one little ball. I'm going to pull off a piece. Yvette, I blame you for this entirely. <laughs> for this happy cat in the background. Oh, no, those aren't the same size at all. <laughs> well, so now I have three completely different sized. If I were a wiser person, I would roll out a snake in uniform width and then just cut two same sized bits from it, but I think those two are close enough to the right size for me now. There's a million different paths to get to where you're going, so don't feel like you have to do something a particular way or that you have to be super duper time efficient about it sometimes it really you know and this is some hippie stuff but sometimes it really is more about having fun making the piece than anything because the more joy you have in your work that's going to show through even as a professional even as a business person i've found it's just as important to keep the you know as keeping the books balanced as you know doing everything you know keeping joy in my work has been just as essential as doing all of the other, you know, typical business practices that most people would think of. So, if you're not having fun, what's the point? But having that fun, though, is going to show through in your work. Your clients will see it, you know, it, it'll keep you sustained even if sales aren't going well or anything, you know. Keep the joy in it. So now I've done little... <laughs> excuse me, designs off to each side. Mm -hmm. Like just a little, just a little ball. And we could take a stylus and smoosh, just do like a little dimple in each side if we wanted. You could use different leather working tools to do patterns or designs, but I actually think let me pull my gloves up. And I could just use those little finger gloves, <clears throat> but with as much as I roll on the palms of my hands. Okay. I'm actually going to take this and taper it down to the, uh, the ring band. I want to remove it from the face of the stone if I can. Mm -hmm. And then we can actually just pet it, <laughs> pretty ring, <laughs> and blend that out nicely. 
and there'll be some work here that we can do during like cleanup once it's cured but for now I'm just gonna get this shaping as best I can yeah if I get results doing it on one side I should probably do it with that same hand maybe that'll help me keep it symmetrical but yeah just kind of petting it out I want to keep the nice round face of the stone as much as possible I don't want to impinge on that with the clay Okay. So there we go. But yeah, I think I want to keep it like that. And then we can touch it up a little bit more when we get into the sanding portion. Because that does not look very symmetrical from the side. We'll figure it out. So I'm going to set that off to the side to let it start curing. We can also just try it on. And fortunately, fingers are not perfectly round, so even though it doesn't look symmetrical whenever it's, you know, off a finger, when it's on a finger, if it looks nice, that's how you're gonna be wearing it. So I feel like that's what's important. <laughs> the priorities. And you can fiddle with that just as much as you want. Keep in mind, I still have like two more hours until this isn't sculptable. So we can really just set that off to the side. Um, now we also have, I'm going to do the same thing using a much bigger chunk of our epoxy sculpt. Rolling it out just a little bit more. Now this time, I'm going to place the copper down and smush from the back side. Just experiment, see which way I like better. And smush, 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 smush. Well, that's some pokey copper though. So I'm gonna push that right on back in. Again, a wiser self would have just gone ahead and filed that down, but fine about that life. So I think I prefer putting the glob on the stone and then smushing it on. I have an easier time with that, you know, and I am going to go ahead and just file that down. Or just trim it off. You're too pokey. There you are. You can also use whatever tools you have at your disposal to make your life easier. But yeah, I think I prefer putting the glob on first because then it, it fills in all these like little gaps and things. Because this epoxy adheres really nicely and so I feel like the more of the more adhesion we have right now with the epoxy the easier of a time we're gonna have making sure that the ring is very very durable so I'm just gonna keep that all smooshed up and then once it's a little drier I'll go through maybe with a craft knife or um, you can Dremel sand this stuff down if you feel confident with a Dremel but I'm going to let these guys kind of do their thing. So it has been a few hours and my epoxy sculpt has started to harden up a little bit. It's still perfectly sculptable um, and pretty malleable, but it's not nearly as sticky. So I'm actually taking my little rubber tipped tools and dipping it in some water and then just using it to smooth the water at like a little bit of a lubricant and look at that what a lovely dog hair that I just pulled out of my project um <laughs> it just kind of glides everything around 
and is reducing the amount of drag on the stone. So I'm going to see if I can't zoom in a little bit. I'm hesitant to zoom in because I'm really bad about staying on camera. I apologize and thank you guys for your patience. But yeah, it's just letting me really blend out that scene and get some shaping going. And I'm doing this on my stainless steel mandrel. That way it gives me a nice clean line there to the inside. Of all the things that I've worked on, I know my strengths and weaknesses for the most part in clean, um, like nice looking, <laughs> like clean is really difficult for me. So any, any tool that I can use, any prop that makes that a little bit easier or a little bit more effective. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> so, or at least try to do that. I'm not so worried about any epoxy sculpt building up on the stone because whenever I go through and polish it after the electro forming or after it's all like kind of cleaned up, like that'll that'll tidy up nicely. I think later on, just getting that shaped down. And again, this is the artistic part. Get it to look however you want. It's your ring. <laughs> you know, don't don't ever let anybody else tell you that you did it wrong if it's your art. It's like, well, maybe for you, I didn't do it the way you would have done. But and just refer them to a nice tutorial and be like, go make it your own self if you're so grumpy. <laughs> but Okay. So there's that one, getting tidied up just, of course, I'm out of frame, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'll polish that up whenever I don't have to worry about um, upsetting my epoxy sculpt. But I really do like, I think that's going to look pretty neat, especially once it's all electroformed. And this way, you shouldn't have to worry about it tangling into hair or anything, too, if you're wearing it and like try to put your hair up into a ponytail or something. So that brings us to this one. We can come through and actually just dip some fresh water on. Just round and smooth these edges because we're gonna be going through and putting on some copper um, tape and having a nice clean edge to put that tape on is gonna give us a really nice it's going to translate through the tape. Like if there's any bumps or texture or anything, the tape's going to, you know, transfer that. It's going to reflect that on its surface. Um, also, by setting it up to where we can very cleanly and easily apply the copper tape, this is going to allow us that if you don't want to electroform this, if you have like a lead-free solder and a soldering iron, you could actually make a soldered piece out of this because that solder will fit or will uh, adhere to the copper. And so I think that's pretty cool just to be able to have some different options. And th that's, that's what I like about learning a bunch of different techniques like this too is something that, you know, the I, my, my sculpting from polymer clay, sorry, tripping all over my words, but the sculpting experience I have with polymer clay transfers over into sculpting the epoxy sculpt and a lot of the tools and materials and things that I use for electroforming also, you know, lend themselves to soldering both with an iron or a torch. So it's just the more you learn, if you learn just a little bit every day, you know, imagine where you'll be six months from now, a year from now, 10 years from now. Because that's what I'm looking at, you know, at the time of recording, it's the end of 2018. This is marks the 10th year of my partner and I having our own business and, you know, creating for a living. And I would have never thought, like, I really never thought I would be doing stuff like this 10 years ago whenever I first started out. But baby steps will take you where you're going. So there's that one, and now we have our little ammonite piece. Nice little fossil, so I'm just going to dip that in there, and then blend out. And this is how I'm going to try to get it to look just very, very seamless between where the stone and the epoxy meet. 
just spreading that water around. And I don't think I can say it enough, you guys. If you don't like that the videos are very long and slow and real time, uh, please fast forward. <laughs> like, feel free to skip around, to fast forward, to, you know, but, uh, I'd rather leave something in that you feel is unnecessary, just in case somebody else finds it helpful, than to presume that you guys know what's going on, because I don't know what's going on, but to presume, <laughs> and then you guys be like, um, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you doing? Okay, so there's sculpted out some of the lines and then to make sure that it fits comfortably a little spot for the finger to actually go I'm not gonna push down because I don't want to risk pulling anything out but I've just got it on there and now I'm pressing and then pull out oh, sorry for the thuds there we go and then we can try that one on Ooh, I do like that <laughs> So that one's ready. And now we're just going to keep letting them set up until tomorrow before I start applying the copper tape and any graphite paint if we're electroforming. So again, I'll meet you guys back here for that. Whenever our epoxy is completely cured, our next step is going to be to wrap it in copper tape. You could paint it with graphite paint but I wanted to give you guys the option to um, be able to make this completely into a soldered ring if you didn't want to do the electroforming process. Um, there'll be links down below to the solder and iron that I recommend for doing this um, but they like uh, I'll just be doing the electroforming in this tutorial please keep an eye out in the future for doing a solder tutorial but what's nice about doing this process is you can go either route with it whether it's soldered or electroformed so here I have some copper tape in half and quarter inch sizes and I'm going to go through and get the measurement for around our stones with a little bit of overlap because I'd rather have a little bit of overlap than not enough and have to splice in because that can get messy the idea behind using the tape instead of using the graphite paint is it gives us a very crisp clean edge or at least that's what I like about it so I'm gonna start here now the epoxy is holding on to our stone, so we don't have to worry so much about covering the edge, but if you really want to be just double, triple certain sure, we can leave about a millimeter or so protruding the edge of our stone. And I'm just lining it up and pressing to make contact so that it doesn't slip around. Just being very careful, there's no sense in rushing through this. And this way, whenever you have that bit of overlap, now we can come through, and I'm just going to use my the pads of my fingers initially, um, but then we'll be going through with a tool called a burnisher. And this one I think is actually an agate burnisher. It's not quite as hard on stones as like using a metal burnisher would be, but it helps to level and smooth all of the little bumps and creases and things in our copper. But I have a much easier time getting a consistent edge with the tape than I do with the um, the graphite paint. So here's our burnisher. And you can see, maybe, the difference here. And again, the smoother of a base that we have to electroform or solder on, the smoother our result is going to be. 
So you can see that's starting to flatten out and eliminate some of those bumps and creases. You can just make really solid contact with the tape. There we go. And I'm really impressed with the durability of just the tape. Like this one's just been epoxied and taped. And if it weren't for the graphite paint, I feel it almost like it'd be wearable. But it probably would scrape quite easily if I were really getting rambunctious. Um, so it's better to not push it, I think. Okay, and then I like to use the quarter inch or the half inch for just down the center area here where the finger will be going. So, kind of just eyeballing that. Now this is a conductive tape, like the copper itself, whoops, is conductive. So I just threw it on the ground. <laughs> So this will be really nice to electroform over, building a thicker layer of copper. Okay. So let's get some nice overlap there. And then bring this through. And just rubbing it down. Burnishing it in. And now from here, we could just paint with the graphite paint on these two open areas. And that actually gives us a pretty nice gauge for um, when we're electroforming, whenever the black of the graphite is completely covered, you know, it, it's easier to gauge the uh, the thickness of the electroformed copper than if we're just measuring copper on copper. Okay, so I'm just, again, wrapping the tape around. Burnishing. but I'm doing this as though we were going to be covering this in solder. And what I would do before soldering is I would actually pickle this, get it nice and clean. That way, uh, you know, then we'll flux it and put the solder on. And this uses just very little bits of the tape. I hope I didn't cut the piece too small. That would be... Perfect, it came out nice, good. Okay, <laughs> I was worried for a second there. Now also, I do really enjoy using these rubber tipped tools for just kind of pushing and smushing into all those crevices that my fingernail may not be able to reach. And burnishing. So there we are, with an ammonite ring. Ready for either being soldered or the electroform solution. Now we have a little bit of overlap here where we have like a sharp edge. A craft knife would be preferable, but all I have on hand is this box knife, but we can come through. And just slice away that little bit. And I don't want to scratch the surface of my stone. But we can totally trim it back. 
in theory come on tape <laughs> so like I said it's actually pretty on there there we go and now we have a smoother line now I'm gonna go through and do the same process on our other two pieces and I'm gonna do that in time-lapse like fast-forward um, because there's nothing that will be facing with these guys that we didn't already face with this one so let's do it For this piece, I have decided I'm going to go ahead and just do the graphite on it, um, just because with the way that things kind of shape around, there's no way that I could get the, easily at least, that I could get the tape to sit kind of the way that I want. So I am scraping back the epoxy in a way that makes me happy. Again, instead of using your fingernails, you could use any kind of sculpting tool or anything like that. But I just want it to look nice, nice and round. There we are. Then we'll come through. Swish my brush in a bit of distilled water. Use that to thin down our pigment just a little bit. And then I'm going to go through and paint about four layers of this graphite paint. If I get any on the stone, I just go ahead and just wipe it off. And then the next step is going to be to put these guys into our electroforming solution so I'll meet you guys in the lab for the next step. On each of the cabochons of the finger rings I'm going through and doing a few layers of Mod Podge um, just to make sure especially here on this turquoise because it is going to be uh, you're more sensitive to the acid solution than say you know a quartz crystal or a jasper or something of the sort but it's just to protect the finish and this can be peeled off or you can use acetone but uh, the first layer isn't quite dry yet on this one but I'm just going through trying really hard to not get it on any of the metal because the Mod Podge isn't conductive so it shouldn't <laughs> um, be building up any electroformed copper deposits and you can see I'm just keeping it as level as I can here in this little uh, wire spool and I've done that to all of the rings that we're going to be electroforming I'm going to let that dry completely and then uh, submerge it in the electroforming bath so this is what our rings are looking like before we put them into the electroforming solution this one was only in the electroforming solution for about two hours um, and I have it riding at 0.2 volts and around 0.73 amps on my rectifier 
this one I left in for about four hours. Oh, and there's the dogs barking. So you can see how that's looking. We got some nice texture buildup. I think I had bumped this one up to um, a full like one and a half amps. And that gives us a little bit more texture. And now this one here has been in the bath overnight. So, and I've been using the same hook. So it's actually, it looks pretty cool, I think. I kind of poked in and looked at it before my coffee this morning. So just let me get this tripod shifted around. Hey. So that you can see, I'm gonna switch that off so I don't zap my silly self. Remove our cathode. Put that there. And so you can see, we have quite a bit of buildup. I've been using the same hook um, on all of my pieces for the past couple of days. So it is really building up some copper. <laughs> Neutralizing it in a baking soda solution. Ah, but there we are. And let's see how this detaches. That's always my main worry whenever um, I leave them in overnight is that the hook isn't getting moved around enough. So you can see I just kind of dislodged it. Isn't that something though? <laughs> like, I think next time I may actually form the hook into like a final shape that I'll be interested in and then use this part as a jewelry component as well. Kind of two birds with one stone. Um, but for now, I'm just going to take this hook, one of the rings onto it, lower it into our bath, attach our cathode to our wire, and our anode is still attached you know, to all the copper strip going through. I'm going to flip that back on. <clears throat> and now we can take a closer look at this piece. Man, I love that texturing. <clears throat> we'll take a closer look at this piece over at our workbench. This is our piece after it has come out of the electroforming solution. It had been in the bath overnight. I haven't done any polishing or anything yet um, and it actually reduced it from a size 9 to about a size 7 it really really built up um, like I probably should not have left it in there for as long but what I'm going to be doing now is coming through with a rotary tool and just cleaning out the inside uh, kind of I want to try to bring it back up to a size 9 um, that way I can wear it <laughs> And, you know, kind of get rid of that little notch that's right there from where the wire was sitting on it. And just to see, you know, what we're capable of with reshaping. Um, I, it's going to be in time lapse, though, because I'm going to have a respirator and face guard on. Keep all this stuff out of me. You don't want to be super durable. That's good. Uh, you don't want to be breathing this in or getting it in your eyes or anything like that. But I, we did get some pretty cool texturing that I'm really excited to see. How that comes to life whenever we do the liver of sulfur and stuff but first things first we're gonna reshape the inside So, I don't think I was able to reduce it by too much, that's for sure, but man, this gets hot. I'm really glad I thought to use my, ooh, I got a 
too torn up by the Dremel, but I am really glad that I did think to use my ring clamp because this uh, got so hot that it started to bubble the layer of Mod Podge that we had put on the surface to protect the stone. So this is definitely going to be something to keep in mind for if you're using any kind of acrylic or resin or stabilized stone, like a stabilized turquoise, this, the heat will make, um, will make it kind of bubble and stuff. So I'm, I am going to have to go through and use a bit of acetone and stuff, but I figure I'm going to be doing that at the very end. So, uh, but yeah, you can see it's quite nice and polished there on the inside. Let's see how much this was able to bring the size down. I guess I should have shown you. Uh, not by much, honestly. Um, by about like that much powder worth. Uh, so definitely next time, I'm either going to not put it into the bath for very long or keep in mind to bring it you know, a couple of sizes up, though it does fit now. That didn't happen before, so that's good. But yeah, I'm definitely going to want to shine this up a little bit more. So I'm going to go through the set that I have. This is what I, my grinding uh, set. It goes all the way up to felt in fine, uh, like, fine texture. And so you can use that with, like, um, a polishing compound um, but yeah, so I've used the pink. I'm going to kind of work my way up through and go over the whole stone. I think getting, you know, uh, some of these surfaces polished up a little bit if I can manage that. But I don't want to diminish any of the bubbling and stuff. We worked really hard to get that, so. <laughs> but, uh, there are links down in the video description. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet, but, uh, to where you can purchase the same tools that I'm using. Uh, those are affiliate links, so anything that you purchase through there, even if you don't get the original item linked to, um, uh, it still really benefits our company, so I really appreciate you guys' support that way. But uh, yeah, it's I'm wearing ear protection, a respirator, and a face shield just for good measure. Um, I get a headache from everything kind of squeezing on my head, but I'd rather have a headache from that than damaged hearing or metal shards in my eyes or, you know, like, only get one set of lungs, so... But uh, I'm going to have a bit of a coffee break, and then I'm going to get right back to sanding this, and I'll catch some of that on camera for you guys. And then I'm going to pop it into the tumbler, um, so I'll meet you guys back here for that step. So I'm back here in the lab with my single barrel rotary tumbler and I have this filled with an angular stainless steel shot from Rio Grande, that's my rectifier, <laughs> it's a cooling fan. Um, and normally I would wait until I had like a complete batch, like uh, maybe five or six rings at least to put in here to tumble, um, but just to demonstrate uh, I'm sure I can find a few other pieces to tumble to. Um, I would just put it in. I have, the, it's a smart water bottle, but that's because it, they're, they're a good size to store. Um, but this is just regular old sink water. You could use distilled water if you like. I haven't found that to be necessary for this step. And I try to never fill my barrel more than halfway with water. And then... I prefer using sunsheen burnishing compound. I've heard of some people using like toothpaste or dish, you know, dishwashing liquid, um, or baking soda or polishing. I just I like this stuff. I paid like I think thirty bucks for a, li a liter of it, like six years ago. <laughs> I use it for polishing up all of my. Uh, oh, that was a bit much, but usually like maybe a cap full, like quarter to half teaspoon really is all that's necessary but it goes a long way and I had started off getting this four ounce sample bottle um, but since then I've gotten the, the big bottle and just refill this one so we've got that in there I would cap it off which it has this like metal 
and rubber thing, I believe. I don't know if this is neoprene. I don't know. It's rubber. Super durable. And I'm just really getting that seal in there. There's a little bit of a line on the inside as well as the outside that I try to not go past. I leave the little knob on there because it gives it doesn't hurt my fingers as much as just the threaded screw. Um, and then I'm putting the cap and the washer down over it. And then I tighten this down. Nice and tight. What this is doing is it's actually pulling and making this seal here quite tight because you don't want it to just leak everywhere. I'm putting that in there. And then there's a switch on the side. I'm just gonna flip it and leave it running for at least an hour. Uh, usually is how long I'll tumble stuff. And there we go. Please pardon it being loud. I've still got the rotary tumbler going, but I just wanted to check on this ring that I have in here. Um, I've been checking on it quite frequently because it is a stabilized turquoise. I'm gonna flip off our rectifier. Pull this out. Let's get it stabilized in our baking soda solution. There we are. Oh, and you know, that's looking just lovely. I think this one is ready. And it doesn't need any uh, shaping or anything, so I'm actually going to put it up in with our rotary tumbler to get it polished up as well. And I've been keeping a cycle. I just pulled this one out of the electrifying solution, and I've got this ring right here all ready to go also. So I'm just gonna hook it right onto our very uh, copper-laden um, cathode. And flip that back on. Looks like we're running at 0.3 volts and 1.07 amps. I'm going to turn that down a little bit to like maybe a 0.75. Um, that way it'll give us a more even base layer and then I can ramp it up to get a little bit more of that texturing that I do like so much. So I'm just going to turn off and open back up my rotary tumbler. I've had my eye on a vibr vibratory, vibrating tumbler basically <laughs> um, for a while, but uh, it was too tall to fit on my shelf, so I figured, well, not today, that it costs like twice as much, so, uh, whoop, there we are. But you can get, I mean, I, I can't speak from personal experience to the similarities or differences in the effects that you can get with the different kinds of tumblers, but, um, I'd love to hear y'all's opinion on that if you have any experience or any wisdom to lend, so I've just opened it back up drop in that ring in there and you can see it doesn't get nearly as sudsy as what it would if you had like a dish soap or something in there and then closing it back up and I'll meet you guys back here in an hour to take these back out hey y'all so I've taken my rings out of the tumbler and they're doing pretty good but I want to oxidize them using liver of sulfur so I have mixed in hot water from the tap it's just as hot as it'll come. Uh, four drops of liver of sulfur gel. Links, uh, I think I've mentioned this, but there will be links for this stuff down below. And then I'm just going to be using my tweezers to get varying degrees of patina by dipping these guys in. How did I catch a mosquito in my liver of sulfur? Well, <laughs> I don't think it ended well. Poor mosquito. Um... I hate mosquitoes. Ooh, that's starting to get a nice oxidation. And then I've got a bath of uh, water with baking soda over here on the side that by removing the liver of sulfur and neutralizing it, it should stop the patina just right where it's at. So this one I'm going to have as our very light patina example. This one I think I'm going to do a very dark patina because I really want to show off the high points and all the detailing that's going on here. So I'm going to swirl this. I'm actually just going to leave that one sit in there for a minute. And then, ooh, this one just came out of the tumbler <clears throat> and it has some really nice texturing and stuff. This one was made entirely with um, 
what's it called the copper tape and I think a little bit of epoxy sculpt underneath that but really really pleased with that using the copper tape to make the bezel and so I felt like we got a really nice even build up around the edges okay so I'm gonna dip that one in and let's take a look at this one now this one I've already removed the Mod Podge from the surface of the stone and I'm really excited to see how the uh, patina ends up looking on this one. And Ooh, so this one's nice and dark. So I'm going to swish it in the bath. Neutralize. Take this one out. Swish it in the bath. And now this one in here. Dunk, 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 and swish it in the bath. I usually try to do all of my livery of sulfuring, like all my oxidizing, kind of in the same sitting. That way, um, we don't really have to worry about like mixing it up. It makes me feel like I get my full use out of it, or out of the mixture. So for this one, I'm actually going to come through with just a regular old emery board. to bring up those highlights. And you can see, oh, let me see if we can zoom. There we go. You can see that's really starting to bring out the high points especially on where the texture from the tape was, the copper tape. Because on each of these rings, I'm going to try a slightly different technique for uh, finishing them. Just, you know, experiment. That is quite cool. Pretty pleased with that. So you can see how it pulls out the highlights a little bit. Swish it around again. So that one was our emery board. Now this one, I'm going to use a steel brush on. And you can see this one seems to have gotten a much deeper patina than the other that was just dipped in quite briefly. Ooh, it's looking so gnarly and cool. I'm also going to go ahead and, knowing that Tiger's Eye is a pretty resilient stone, I believe it's a 7 on the most hardness, but don't quote me on that. <clears throat> so I don't mind a bit scratching over it. In fact, I need to get the Mod Podge off the surface. So and you can see it starts to, once you kind of start whittling away at it, it starts to flake off just fine on its own, revealing the shiny and protected stone underneath. Now this stone was already pretty pocked up. It was like in a uh, discounted assortment batch from like I think Fire Mountain Gems like a million years ago. <laughs> um, so not the highest quality stone, but character for sure. Sometimes I find a stone with a little bit of uh, you know imperfections about it way more interesting than a stone that's perfect. Okay, so yeah, that's really starting to bring out the shine on the high points, especially. But you can see that gives it a really nice oxidation, and I do just love the chatoyance of a tiger's eye. 
And I'll be grabbing some nail polish remover to get that Mod Podge off the surface of that stone. So now that was our steel brush ring. And now I'm going to go through on this one just using steel wool. This is a uh, double zero, so very fine steel wool. I guess I could start with something a little less fine. But if you've only got one thing, let's see what kind of result we can get. And gosh darn it, I love it. <laughs> like, I am loving that result. And I am just going through, I mean, on the band and everything. There we go. And this is something that you can do, just, you know, put, put Netflix on or train some YouTube. And, um, you know, just put a little bit of elbow grease in it. Ooh. Stone's still okay. And you'd be surprised what kind of results you can get. It's a little harder to get inside the ring band, but we'll figure it out. There we go. You can see it's starting to really bring a nice shine up out of it. Okay. So that one's our steel wool ring. And so for this last one, I would like to use a buffing tip that came from this kit here. I think I'm actually going to use one of these rubber tips. I think that'll be nice. Or maybe one of these green stone ones. Yeah, let's do the green stone. So using our little wrench to loosen that up. And using our little wrench to tighten that back down. There we are. And now I am going to put on my face mask just real quick. And this is going to get pretty loud, so I'm going to put this into time lapse actually. And so there we are. I think that really brought out some nice, oh, if it'll focus, some nice sparkles on it. I imagine once we get it under some natural daylight, it'll start to look a lot warmer. Very nice. So this one I'm especially pleased with, with how smooth the inside came out. Again, gotta get the rest of that Mod Podge off the surface of the stone. I do prefer a nice liquid latex because it just kind of shloop, like peels right off. But I am all out of that currently. So I want to do experiment with using Mod Podge. Mod Podge. But yeah, I'll, again, I'll just go through just like removing nail polish with nail polish remover. But this one's probably definitely my favorite as far as the textures go. I really love that. Though building up the band, I think I may actually use a thinner wire for the band next time, um, knowing now how much it builds up. Um, super cool on that one. This one I think was just a, a neat, like weird design. <laughs> um, that one came out, I don't know, that green stone really made that one look very like pale like a different color from the others and then this one here too let's see if we can start taking that Mod Podge off 
There we go. And this one, I did such a thick layer of Mod Podge because I know that turquoise being a softer stone was not going to hold up to the acidity well. And so that that's how it just peels right off. Getting it out of the seam there just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they had some copper grow up over the edge of the Mod Podge. Which is pretty cool. That it encourages me. I feel confident that the stone's never going to pop off of this. So there we are with some rings, you guys. Pretty happy about that. And my busted little pinky nail. <laughs> hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me in this video. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Um, as well as any advice that you might give, because I'm still quite new to this and learning just as much as I can. But uh, there's nothing quite like getting your hands dirty with it. So um, there are links down below where you can post things to my Facebook wall or tag me on Instagram if you make something and would like for me to see it. Um, it's like, or it's just a good way of getting my attention online being like, oi, look at what I did. <laughs> and I love more than anything getting to see what y'all make. So, um, you can also post those to my Patreon page. You don't have to be a pledger or anything, just following me on Patreon and you can post over there and, um, that's where I'm at. probably of all my social media. That's where I'm most active. Speaking of Patreon, it's also a great way to help support our channel. Insert generic YouTube commercial here. Um, but honestly, though, like uh, you, the more you pledge, the more you get, whether it's behind the scenes um, content like exclusive to Patreon or my digital download tier for all of my leather and sewing templates, as well as my coloring pages that I do with mandala art or my monthly craft crates where you can get possibly some of your own electro formed. I got it. Um, <laughs> electroformed components or uh, handmade cabochons or cabochons. You get stuff and you can craft alongside me and it's a lot of fun um, and it helps me to be able to keep these tutorials free um, for y'all. <laughs> but on that note, I will see y'all in my next video and until then you guys, happy crafting. Bye! <laughs>